passion for them. He didn't want them leaving hungry. It was getting late, and it was a long ways to go, and he wanted to take care of them. Even when they didn't think it was possible to be taken care of, he took care of them right then. And they were all full, and they picked up 12 baskets. We ain't talking about a little basket. We're talking about a basket that a man could fit in and be lowered down from a window and escape. In Jesus' name, we believe that's going to take place. Amen. Thank you, brother. So, it's good to see Hunter and Molly, and uh, she took off with that baby. <laughs> And so, um, Annabeth, right? The newest person to the body of Christ. They're so innocent. There's no sin in them. They're innocent. And especially if your household is pure. Because if one person in the house is saved, they sanctify the whole house, according to Scripture. And I... I'm so glad to see Miss Wendy back, right? Huh? I told her it, 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 she went through some tough stuff, but it, I, it was kind of like that old insurance thing you see on TV. It's like it never happened. And so, but she has to go in next week, isn't it? Tuesday? Okay, yeah. Next two, this coming Tuesday. Uh, so we need to lift her up in prayer today, but we need to lift her up on Tuesday as well. What time is that? I didn't hear about 10? Okay. And she's going in for them. They're going to do a heart catheterization on her, which basically they're going to look to see if there's any arteries blocked and things like that. And uh, I personally know how that feels because I've had that happen about, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago. I'm fine. It's a good thing. God has put things in action for us to be able to live longer. All healing comes from God. So we thank you, Father, for Miss Wendy. We thank you, Father, for your love for her, your steadfast love for her. You're steady with her all the time. You're actually going steady with her. You love her so much. You protect her. You strengthen her. You've helped her in her time of need. And she so much appreciates it. I know she does. And she loves you. But you first loved her and us. So we ask that those doctors, as they do what they've been trained and do, that they'll only do exactly what they need to do, nothing more and nothing less. And that you would guide them and give them insight and speak to them in that time. We pray for Wendy, that all will be well in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. So today, we're going to get started here because I know this is, this is important and I believe it's, it's time sensitive. And this information was done back in 2019. I'm about to bring some of his stuff in 2019 back to, and it's just like, it's, he, it was almost like in 2019 he could see where it was going on right now because it is happening right now. So we're going to paint this picture that I think that you're going to enjoy. Why? Because it's going to bring life and truth to you that you may or may not see. Now, I'm, I've, I've built this up pretty big now, so I better deliver. And I hope you receive it with open ears and an open heart. I really do. Father, we thank you for your word, and we're going to ask, Lord God, that it'll go out and it'll accomplish exactly what you want it to accomplish. Make us ready for your coming. Make us ready, God, for everything that we need to get prepared for and do. Let us be mindful that we're brothers and sisters in Christ 
and we are to prefer our brothers before ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I can tell you, you and I, and you know this, we're living in strange times right now. Very strange times. We're actually living, I believe, at the very end of the age. And as a result, we're going to see and experience things, I believe, that no generation, no generation has ever witnessed. As I start to move forward, there's going to be some things, you know, it's going to seem maybe far-fetched, and, but this is what we're going to be seeing, stuff that is far-fetched, it's so bizarre that a rational human being, somebody that thinks with some rationality, will find it incomprehensible. If you're not seeing that now, seriously. See, too many of us already seem that it seems like common sense has just been completely thrown out the window, going off in the wind, on, especially on various fronts. If, you, if you've done what I've done, I'm seeing it in a lot of different areas of life, the political realms, the, the, this, the, the home, the, the schools, the, just the military. The, it's unbelievable. I would have never thought that just a few short years ago. They've thrown out all sensibility and it's been replaced with irrational beliefs that are jeered on. People are cheering it on. I watched Charlie Kirk the other day and they were out there and they just were lambasting him. And they don't even know what they're saying half the day. They don't even know what's going on. They're just there as a group and they're yelling and screaming. And as bad, they said, well, they, 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 they interrupted Charlie. No, they didn't. Charlie just went in and out, and hundreds and thousands of other people were there that are listening. <clears throat> There's a body of unbelievers that are screaming and yelling, and yet God has raised up a remnant that's praising and getting clear understanding of what's happening. We, we, if you, we're, we're born for this time. And I believe that we have and we must accept what we know that's happening. See, a lot of times people say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to stop that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. That's ignorance. You don't want to hear what God's word says about what's getting ready to happen? He put a whole book together for it. So you and I, we're going to be a witness to, the, to these strange developments as we near the end of the last days of this time frame that I believe we're in. The scripture long ago, it, it foretold that the last days would be strange. But because you and I are born in this time frame, we will inevitably, inevitably, we're being thrusted into this weird I call it weird, too. I mean, it's weird. It's just like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I mean, people are talking. They're, they're, not, they're not even talking, making any sense. And that's just going to happen because that's part of the territory that we're in right now. So the challenge of God's people is that we're gonna, we try to, during this time frame of what we see that is crazy, we... People, we need to come to a place to where we realize that there's this lunacy that's going on throughout the world, and our job is to try to keep it from entering into the body of Christ and entering into our family members. So you have a job in this situation. If you're a rational person at all, you don't even have to be real godly. You just have to be sensible and can hear what's going on and should be able to see you don't want to be part of that. And if you're not careful, what will happen is, is it'll happen to, it'll happen if you're not careful, I'm telling you, 
This stuff will try to come in. It'll start to muddy up everything that you've believed. We are seeing, are we not seeing it? We can name people right now. We're seeing that, that we would have never thought this would happen, ever. Good, godly people. For a long time, been a long time, know them personally. So we got to dig our heels in, man. We got to dig in, establish the truth of the scripture. That's what we've got to do. That's the key, the truth of the scripture. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what you think or what you say. It matters what he said. If you go by what he said, I can promise you we're going to be all right. Live or die, we're going to be all right. See, everybody's worried about dying. I said, hey, you better be worried about living and getting it right before you die. Because we're all going to die. You praise God. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm praising you, Father. You let me get up. Another shot. One more time. One more time. Do I deserve it? Probably not. But let's get this straight. He sees something in me enough to say, I'm going to let him get up again. You know, I have, I have these people that I've preached at the Keaton House for a lot of years, 29 years. And the judge would send them to the Keaton House. And the reason they sent them is a drug rehab alcohol place. And I'd preach down there for a long time. And they, they would come in. And the judge sent them there not to punish them, but because he's seen enough in them that he believed they could get it right. There was accountability, strict accountability. And see, this is where God's taking us. We're coming to a place where everything is, it's a strict thing now. We got to get, we got to get tight with what he's saying. So we got to be determined to keep our heads on straight in a world that just seems to have gone totally crazy. We can't stick our heads in the sand. We got to know what's going on. So I'm going to share what's been going on, and it's been going on for a long time. This thing has not just started. This thing has been set up a long time ago, from the very beginning when Satan was cast down. His plan is always to kill you if he can get a shot at you. He hates your guts, hates your guts, and he will deceive you and bring you to a place to where he'll kill you if he gets a shot. All he cares about, you are the creation of God. He hates the creation of God. So approximately 2,000 years ago, the scripture prophesied of this end time delusion. There, people are delusional, man. I would have thought, you know, when you can't, sometimes you can't even talk to somebody. They're not even rational. They're delusional. Okay, uh, we're going to read it out of 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2 in the app, class, uh, in the classic. Okay, and it says this, and I want to slow it down. Let's slow it down. We don't have to read it fast. I want to digest, get this in our spirit. But the Holy Spirit, the who? The Holy Spirit. Distinctly. In other words, purposely. Distinctly and expressly declares that the latter time, the latter times, in the latter times, some, not everybody, some will turn away from the faith. I see that happening. Do you? Why? Because they're giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Verse 2. How is it happening? Through the hypocrisy and the pretensions. Pretensions, I looked it up, I want to make sure I understood that. Attempting to express by affecting greater, or you're really trying to express that in effect, that you have greater importance and talent, culture, etc., than is actually past. We got people that think they're so wise. We got people that think they're so elite. They got it all going on. Listen to me. And such hypocrisy that you have never seen. They will lie to your face 
and tell you exactly what's wrong with that person and they're doing exactly what they're accusing that person of. That's hypocrisy. Through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose conscience are seared, cauterized. You cut yourself, you put a hot iron and you stop the blood flow by cauterizing. There's no more blood, there's no more flow in there. Their, their conscience is seared. So in this verse that I believe the Holy Spirit has alerted us to, um, alert, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, alerted us that there would be this invasion of what? Seducing spirits that would attempt to lead society off track. Now listen to me. You don't think that you can get this? You don't think this could happen to you? This, this sucker's been doing this a long time. You ain't smarter than he is. He is so slick and evil and conniving that he'll have you think you're doing it for God. Seducing spirits that would attempt to lead society off track into unthinkable levels of delusion at the very end of the age, in just a few short years, here's what I want to see, we have witnessed a rapid acceleration of advancement of delusion. Amen? Beyond what any of us could have imagined not so long ago. I'm talking about just a few years ago. Today in the coming weeks, I believe, and I don't even know how far I'm going to get with this, but today and in the coming weeks that I believe God is wanting to study the prophetic utterance in the New Testament, he wants us to get into this, into the word, so that way he can show you the expanding influence that these seducing spirits have these doctrines of devils that will mark the very last of the last days. We will see the Bible explicitly foretold that the worldwide, and this is what it is, it's a worldwide mutiny against God. That it will, and it is coming. People say, well, that's been a long time. Well, it's coming. It's already here. If you can't see it, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> See, we've observed culture changes that are developing all around us. And there is no unmistakable feeling. We are surely, we are already in the middle of this creeping rebellion that has taken place. It is a rebellion against God. Total rebellion. I believe that this sermon today, hopefully is going to morph into a few others, you call it series, whatever you want to call it. As I read more and more, I will be bringing more and more to you of what I believe is coming. We need to be ready. We're not. However that takes place, I believe God's going to instruct and has instructed me to bring this out. See, I believe if I don't, and if something was to happen, and you die, and I didn't say anything, the blood's on my hands. So I'm not going to hold anything back. We're bringing it. So I'm going to give you some concrete examples of this lunacy that's been, I believe, been snaking its way into the culture over the past century. 
a century is 100 years. It's been further back, but I'm taking it back there because we're going to bring a picture. I'm going to paint a picture of what's going on in there. So I'm about to bring these examples, and it's not a focal point or even a point of contention. I don't, I'm not trying to cause or stir anything up. I'm not trying to do that, but simply as evidence, I'm trying to bring the evidence. It is so, once I bring this evidence, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you don't, something's wrong. How far this delusion and widespread mutiny against God and his word. They hate God. They hate the word. They don't want to hear nothing about the word. And already have advanced. This stuff is already advanced in our modern society. So we're so modern. We got it all going on. Let me tell you, it's not all society. It's, not, it's the simple things of life. The things that are important, the very simplest things of life that are important. I, you got to watch this movie. Just having something to eat. Just having a, if it's a cave, what, just having some place to stay, some place to sleep. Just having your health enough that you can walk to that place. You can maybe go and God will take you to a place you need to go in order to get the provision he said he would give you. Do not take that lightly. We do. I do. We think it's always going to be there. I'm telling you, it's not always going to be here. It's not because God doesn't want it. It's because he has to judge what's getting ready to come. He has no choice. He loves us, but he's going to judge every one of us. Society, I'm going to give you an illustration, this kind of seems like a ship that's lost at sea, that's been drifting farther and farther off course. See, it starts out very little. You don't even realize it. If you laid down in a boat and you didn't have it anchored off, you could wake up and now the next thing you know, you're completely on the other side of the lake. And you didn't realize it. And that's what's happening. We're asleep and we're drifting. History just tells us that countless numbers of ships, they've, they've, they've lost at sea. They were lost at sea because why? No course correction. They didn't correct their course. There was nothing put in place to correct the course. They didn't have what they needed to get back on track. They began to lose their bearings. And pretty soon they don't know where they're at. Many Christian leaders believe that lost at sea would describe exactly what we see is going on right now. See, as people of faith, we want to present the belief that God is good. And there's good things in store for us, for mankind. I believe that, but how can we ignore the evidence of this moral that... The, our moral anchor has been lost and the ship is veering off course. How can we ignore that? We can't ignore that. We have been ignoring that. We let people say stuff and do stuff and we've let that go. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. it. So, you know, I know there, I know that there, there's, having sex outside of wedlock. I know that they're, they're sleeping together. I know, it's a, hey, look, I'm not here to condemn. I'm here, I'm not the judge. I'm not that. I'm just going to bring God's word to you to the best of my ability, and then it's entirely up to you and the Holy Spirit. Because, see, I hate when somebody tries to tell me something about myself. It bothers me. My first thought is, you're not my Holy Spirit. <laughs> But maybe it's an instrument of, that he's using. <laughs> and I have had, I, Jackie has been my Holy Spirit at times. She'll see things that I don't see about myself because she knows me. She really knows me. And I know her. Don't think I don't, girl. <laughs> so 
So we, we, we can't ignore the evidence that no doubt that we're, being, we're, we're witnessing a society that's gone a morally drift. <clears throat> People are lured into this depth of, of, of depravity. And this has been going on for the past century. This is almost as bad as, I would say it's almost getting as bad as what, back in the century, back when paganism ruled the earth. It's crazy. It's almost, we, 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 we got all freaked out when the pandemic showed up. And they shut everything down and they made everybody do stuff and they got control over us. We're witnessing a pandemic of reprobate thinking. See, God says, because you haven't done this, I've turned them over as reprobates for the destruction of their flesh that they might be saved. People are going to go through some tough, tough stuff. They're starting to come around. Jackie, tell them just real quick, real quick, come here. Tell them of all the people that you've been seeing that's coming to the Lord that you would have never thought. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Turn, one of turn them. this up. Jim Carrey, have y'all seen his thing? Jordan Peterson, all these intellectuals, all these. And, and I told Jack today, I said, all you have to do is want truth. You really want to have to have truth in your heart. And God will lead you to him. Because ultimately it's him anyway. So all these people are waking and up now. God is so gracious, so gracious to us to wake us up. And all you have to be is want truth. Thank you. Yeah, she was telling me about that, and I thought, really? I don't keep track of any of that, but. So if, if, he, if, if, if they're getting it, we should be thinking about what's going on. Because you've seen, <clears throat> when you've seen some of what is going on in the Hollywood scene or the movie things and all that stuff, and you see what they've stood for for so long and all of a sudden they're changing... That's, that's a, that's to me is a sign. So we're going to move forward in getting acquainted with God's perspective of what the church role is while everybody is screaming and yelling disorderly stuff. If we're committed to a biblical worldview, which is what we should be, a biblical worldview. We're probably going to agree about a lot of stuff that I'm about to bring to you, but there could be some that would believe that the Bible is simply just philosophical options. I don't believe that. Rather than, this is the immutable, and I looked up immutable, I thought, that's an that's unchanging, it doesn't matter, it never changes, voice of God. It's his authority. God's authority trumps anything that the devil has. It's possible that some people, I don't believe here, might not appreciate the position that I'm taking to bring God's word to you. A biblical worldview is based on the infallible. It's defined, infallible. It's defined, I looked it up. You know, I, looked up, I look up words all the time. I look up words when I think that I think I know what I'm talking about. And I'm surprised to realize how much I do know. No, not. <laughs> I'm actually surprised about how I thought. I didn't, I thought, I thought that meant this. So when I have a doubt, I look up infallible defines as incapable of making mistakes. This is God. Incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. Never failing. Always effective. Word of God. That's who we serve. We got, we, we got the big guy on our team. We've got, we've got the main 
main player if you're having a football team on the team. Going to bring us home. So if this is your position that we take that God's word is infallible, that it's, 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 it doesn't make mistakes, it's never wrong, it's never failing, it's always effective, and when a person adheres to the view that the Bible is eternally true, we have to come to that realization. His word is eternal, eternal, everlasting, always going on, eternal. We are not God. We didn't create God. God created us. We are fallible. See, then once you do that, if you, cre- if you look at that, if God's on your side, he never is going to fail you. He's always, his word is true. If you look at that, then consequently, this is, you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're now you're building a foundation of everything he says. You're, 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 it's all about building your house. This is our house. Because the winds, the storms, and the rains, and the floods are going to beat on it, and it's coming. It never did say that it wasn't going to beat on this house. If you hear these words of mine and you do them, then I will liken unto you as a wise man who built his house on a rock. And when the rains came, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, it stood because it built its house on a rock. But if you hear these words of mine and you don't do them, then I will liken unto you as a foolish man who built his house on sand. And when the, rain, when the winds came, the rains came, and the floods came and beat on that house, great was its fall because it built its house on sand. And that's what we're seeing, sand everywhere. And let me just tell you, he didn't say, that if you just do right, everything's going to be good. He said, look, I'm telling you right now, the winds, the rains, this is what happened. You're either a wise person or you're a fool. That's what he said. You hear the word and do it, you're wise. You hear the word you don't do it, you're a fool. Because the rain, the wind, and the flood is coming to everybody. The wise and the fool. And don't think it's not. So as if this is your and my position, then because of this and the grace of God, we should never deviate off of what God says. We should have a firm foundation. See, I want to believe decades from now, and I can say decades because I'm shooting for 120, okay, a decade, 10 years. Decades from now, I believe that I can, I believe I'm going to be in a position where I'm shooting for this so that, I, that I'm going to have the right frame of mind that I will continue to holding to the position and never deviating because my faith is deeply rooted in an unchanging voice of the scriptures of what the word of God is saying to me. That's my heart's desire. That's what I want to do. And you say, well, Jack, how come you ain't doing it? I don't know. Sometimes I just ain't doing it. Sometimes I think, I think it just, it, everything's going to be okay. I have a positive attitude most of the time. Almost all the time. But our life's task, and I'm getting more and more understanding of it. It's coming to me from every angle. So I'm starting to get more and more understanding that. My life's task is to hear the scriptures, understand the scriptures. Very much so. So that we can grow. We, that's how we do it. So we can grow and understand. Of that. And so that way we'll never depart from his eternal truth and that is contained in the word of God. That's where the word is. So, if you don't hold to this view, contrary, you're working into an area where this is going to be maybe, you might say, hey, I, I don't like the way Christians are, the believers. They, they're contrary, they're intolerant, narrow-minded, inflexible, obstinate, just because of this. This is what they're doing, just because we remain unchanging with biblical truths. But those non-biblical views, those are the, that's the world view, non-biblical views, you know what happens to them? They fluctuate. They fluctuate. It's all about feelings. 
They fluctuate on all kinds of issues. That's a biblical worldview. See, this shift, it's like shifting sand because their beliefs are affected by ever-changing current thought. It's always somebody's got this new... Think about how quick this sucker has come up like it is. I just want to identify as a woman right now. And don't you dare say I can't. I am not calling you Jane. Jack. That means we're going to have to hold a stand. Solid rock. Storm's coming. See, they're accepting whatever the norm may be right now. And it'll shift. There'll be another shift. It'll be, but it's what it's doing is it's, it's, it's not staying like it started out being a little bit, you know, okay, we're going to go ahead and tolerate that. And it just keeps getting more and more and more. Till now, it's like, what are we doing? We cannot tolerate that. By the way, within the next week or two, I'm hoping to have a place to where we can change them babies in there and we can have somebody looking out. That's what we're shooting for. So everybody, pray about that. Ask the Lord. If there's anything you can do to help out, we'd appreciate it. Just get with me, get with Jackie. We're going to start trying to get that ready back here. I want you to uh, turn to Ephesians 2.2. People want to disagree, but here's what it says. It says, in which at one time you walked habitually. Remember, I said, I don't want you to be habitually sinners. You don't need to sin habitually. Habitually, you are following the course and the fashions of this world. We're under the sway of the tendency of this present age. That's what's happening to them. Following the prince of the power of the air, Satan. You are obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that is still constantly, consistently works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purpose of God is what we're seeing today. So Paul used this series of Greek words to, pit, uh, uh, to picture people who live by this ever uh, fluctuating whims and constantly changing culture so much so that even in the New Testament believers live by this fixed scripture of truth which oppose those who are doing what they're doing shifting that's normal for today See, a lot of people, today's society, and there was many, many pagans in the first century that perceived Christians to be, this is what they thought. They thought Christians were narrow-minded because they, would, they were listening. They, they'd hear to, and they fixed their standard. And you know what they would do? They wouldn't budge. They wouldn't budge. You know, when you get something in it you know is right and you know is truth, Nobody's going to change your mind on that. We better get it right and better get it truth. That we love God. We know what God is. God is our source. Live or die. Because the opportunity may come. You would need to know whether you're going to budge or not. And if you can't say something about somebody that you know is wrong, you, you don't have to. You're not trying to say them, but you're not backing up. You can, you can be sensitive to people in such a way, but you don't have to compromise God's word that's in you. What you compromise to keep, you'll lose. You don't want to compromise, thinking, oh, I'm just trying to be you. You're going to lose it. Okay.
I'm, got, I'm about to mention about a plight of a certain people whom I believe they're living in a state of deep, really deep, seated confusion. You think of our kids. You think about what's going on with our kids right now. I don't even know how this is happening. I mean, I do, ultimately. But a rational person would have never thought this stuff was going on. They're taking, they're taking babies. They're taking, and they're stealing babies. And they're telling their, in Kuwait, I can't, not, not, is that right? Which one are we giving the money to? Huh? Ukraine. Now, I always say that. I get messed up. I say, well, I get messed up. Ukraine. They're calling themselves love something. And they're telling the parents that we're going to take them because of this war going on, and we're going to take these kids, and we're going to bring them, and we're going to give them a home for right now while everything's getting over with. And then, they're going to, and then they find out that they, they, they have some illness. They tell them they're having to put them in the hospital because there's something wrong. And actually what they're doing, they're harvesting their, their organs because they have to know if their blood type's right. They have to know if their organs are the right, and, they're, and they're, they find a match. And so they're taking those kids and they're, and they're harvesting their, their organs. This is going on now. You've got this madness of all these sex traveling things, all these, getting all these people out the border. The border is a joke. It's a, it's a catastrophe brought on by one man. And his team of cohorts, demons. And they're harvesting these kids, and they're taking them, and they're selling them. And they get more for that than they do the drugs. So they take and put that, that person, that young child, in a row of prostitution, because they can get a lot more money by them. And then when they wore out, they harvest their organs. Don't tell me it's not happening. I will tell you, you are a liar. It is happening. The Bible prophesied that this would occur at the end of the age. And as believers, we need to keep solid, get our anchors in, the, in where we need to be, hold steadfast. We don't need to be drifting off course. This is madness. Okay, I want you to keep in mind that in order to help to frame this, I've got to move forward, okay? I'm having to jump. I think you've, I've given you a little bit of the picture of what's going on. <clears throat> I don't want us to lose sight of our, it's a mandate. We have a divine mandate that God has given us. And as we listen to what I'm about to say, it was through the sacrifice of his son Jesus that God established the church on this earth and the attention that evil would never be left unchecked. It's our watch. It's on our watch that this stuff is happening. You say, what can I do? Stop being silent. They aren't. But we're going to go and we're going to speak the truth in love and we're going to hear what God has to say and we're going to move in that area that God wants us to move in. See, we represent the highest authority in all creation. We've been given these weapons of warfare that he's given us that are mighty for the tearing down of the enemy's stronghold. That's what we've been given. We have power. You don't know you have power. It's because you don't know you have power. It's like a man dying completely 
in poverty and broke and didn't realize that there's money sitting in the bank because he didn't know how to go and get it. We're not that. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. It says this. For though we walk, and listen, we're not talking about walking. We're talking about though we walk, parentheses, live. Say it this way. For though we live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. See, it's not just I can pull a gun out and I can do this. That's what, that's what the flesh wants to do. Let's just line them up, shoot them all. <laughs> Killing kids like that and doing stuff. That's not what we're about. We're about what he says. Our warfare according to, we're not warring according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For wep, Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Verse 5, inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. So we're pulling down these strongholds that, we're trying, that these things are trying to exalt itself and trying to make themselves bigger than they really are. And our job is to say, we're gonna not, we don't agree with that. And we have power to take these strongholds down. And it says, in the rest of part five, and we lead, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. We've got to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. We need to pull down every stronghold, every principality, every power, every ruler of spiritual wickedness in high places that would try to exalt itself above the knowledge of God's word because that's all that counts. See, we have the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, we have the word of God, the sword of the word of God, and through the power of prayer, by the spirit of God, we are called to be diligent, to keep watch, to be faithful, to do our part, to thwart off what Satan's trying to do, because he's trying to carry out his evil strategies. Let that perspective undergird you as you proceed to listen to this that I'm about to bring. Nineteen forty five, at the end of World War II, there was victorious Allied troops entered Nazi concentration camp and were they were aghast at the human suffering they discovered there. As the full scope of this atrocity committed inside the camp was uncovered in the months and years that followed, the world came to know how Nazi forces had systematically murdered millions of people they considered to be inferior in the regime effort to create superior race. That was their goal. But is that a, a superior race? We're still fighting that sucker. But one of the hidden horrors that were uncovered, the Allied troops who liberated the concentration camps <coughs> was, that, was what remained of the sadistic experiments performed on human beings on a wide scale in the name of producing and preserving that pure master race. The scope of these unthinkable experiments is staggering to the human mind. And all of them were conducted away from public scrutiny until discovered by Allied troops. Oh, I wonder where this Chinese virus came from. All behind doors. That's, you know, that's part of what you don't realize. One of the reasons Russia attacked Ukraine, this is some of those things, because they, were, they had laboratories going on. They were doing the same thing that happened what China was doing. The United States was sponsoring it. 
Fauci was the leader of it. Demonic. Okay, the international community, <clears throat> once they discovered this, they, this atrocity that was committed by the Nazi doctors, <clears throat> and they exposed their crimes to the media, the media is the worst people you can even do right now. We don't, I kind of think they're going to start coming around. I kind of think they have no choice. This thing is opening up. Blind eyes are starting to open. The list of horrors that these demented physicians committed is so intensive and grotesque that I will not attempt to mention them all and describe them fully. But the experiment performed were enormous in scope. It was a big, big deal. And many are still unknown today. But I believe it is necessary to open a small window unto the, the description as best I can in what's going on. And this is something that I've read through this book that I got out of, and I thought it was very good. And the extent of the manifested evil that is possible on this earth, when evil is left unchecked because a large part of church within society ignores its civic responsibility. I can't even believe how we can let this happen. Stuff that is going on right now, we are just, there's people involved. But I can't believe how some people are saying what they're saying. They're just, they're lying right to your face on TV, in the news. Speakers that are supposed to be the speakers are flat out lying. And they call it gaslighting. When they blame the other person that does something, they blame them. They're gaslighting them. That's what they call it. If you hear the term gaslight, no. It's what they are actually doing, and they're blaming them for doing it. But they are the ones that are doing it. When evil is left unchecked because a large part of church within a society ignores it, ignores its civic responsibilities, as well as its divine mandate to always watch and pray. Is that not what we're supposed to do? Watch and pray? All of us, verse... I want you to read this verse here, 2641. It says, all of us must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active. What? We got to do something? And watch and pray. See, a lot of people want to watch and pray, but nobody wants to be active. It does say to be cautious. That you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So behind these locked gates of these concentration camps, the Nazi doctors, they carried out these gruesome experiments on, the human, on humans. And they were doing this under the guise of them helping the war effort. That's how they justified it. Oh, we're helping the war effort. These people, they sent them to Nazi concentration camps. That's who did it. These forces were helping them and saying that. Ah, we're helping the war effort. And so some of the things that took place was this chemical attacks <clears throat> that had been a new risk since World War I. The Nazi doctors, they used their access to this vast supplies of what? Helpless human beings that they had. And they used them in those camps to try to get information, coinciding information that would expose and bring out how in the world would, what would take place if we did this. <clears throat> so they took these, they, they would expose innocent prisoners to this unspeakable torment with mustard gas and lethal chemicals to learn about their effects on the human body. And that's been going on for a while. 
So the war effects that they said they were doing, they were doing for the war effects, that rationale, they would also use that to ascertain how quickly infectious spread in battle wounds. So here's what they would do. Prisoners' legs, arms, and torsos were cut out with no anesthesia and intentionally flooded with bacteria and doctors scattered dirt, glass, and splinters into the wounds to make the infection spread faster. Then they agonizingly scraped the wounds again with no anesthesia to learn how effective newly created experimental drugs were fighting the infection. So I want you to understand that women were not spared in these World War II hell holes that called Nazi concentration camps. Here's what happened. Along with the men and the women, they were also just worked, slammed to death. They starved. They were beaten. They were hung, shot, gassed, poisoned. They were even burnt alive in crematoriums. Women were often subject of these horrendous Nazi medical research that was going on in these camps. For instance, here's what they would do. In these buildings, they were, it was top secret me medical research that was being conducted. See, top secret stuff going on all the time. Always in the medical, we, we, we're not allowed to see anything of what's happening. They shut us out. They were often performed, here's what happened. Non-pregnant women These were performed on non-pregnant women to discover more effective ways to sterilize. And on pregnant women, they wanted to find new ways to abort babies in the womb to allow the Nazis' long-term goal of eliminating an undesirable population. So concentration camp doctors also worked intensely at validating their Nazi philosophy by doing this. They would say they thought this. This was their this was their their philosophy that. Jews and gypsies were genetically inferior to in a variety of ways. So one experiment conducted to this end was to contaminate these categories of prisoners with excruciating, dreadful diseases to see if they would die more quickly than the other race that they had considered to be maybe a little superior. As for the fate of some of these subjects, if they survived... These were unimaginable procedures. It was of no consequence to these doctors if they did survive because they all knew they would consider these prisoners useless eaters. That's all they thought. They thought they're just they're useless eaters who were less than human and therefore they would not be allowed to live. They were not worthy to be living. These doctors were aware that these victims next stop because they didn't care if they lived or die, would likely be the gas chamber for extermination. I'm closing right now, believe it or not. So here's what's happening. I believe we're living in a messy times, real messy. I think you would agree. I believe it looks like the world's gone crazy on all kinds of fronts. And if you're thinking that this is biblically based and it's shocking to see how far we've drifted off from once held precious positions in terms of moral faith, the, mor the morality has gone so perverted that 2,000 years ago at the very beginning of the church it told the Holy Spirit told us this, that very strange seasons would emerge both in society and in the church as we approach the end of age. So we're living in that season. I believe that. So I've simply pointed out some of these developments and these demonstrations, the challenges that are, we're facing in these times. So we need each of us, you and I, we need to keep our wits about us and we need to have our eyes fixed on Jesus because we're sailing into some uncharted areas. 
We need to grasp and maintain our hold on the eternal truth that God's word is a must. The good news is that the scripture, this is the good news. Okay, I'm going to bring I'm not leaving you. You're sick. You're no good. You have problems. Amen. See you later. No. We're going to give you the good news. We're living in the greatest days and in the most troublesome times. That's what he said. The great and the terrible days. This is what's happening. More and more, common society as a whole is rejecting the, God's word, his authoritative word. They're rejecting his, his voice. And it really does seem like they're hell-bent on just really embracing self-destruction. Now, does it sound like it to you? Ungodly ways of thinking and believing. Many believers and pastors and spiritual leaders do not know, and we do, we don't. We don't know how to respond. We're not wanting to perceive as being judgmental or condemning. I want you to know we are living in a great time. We need to know that the voice of the Bible needs to be spoken in such a way that the world can see what's happening and we can grab them and bring them into the kingdom of God. Our job is to be steadfast, steady, unchanging, loving God's word, not being double-minded, not being unstable. The word of God says we're not to be unstable. A man is unstable if he's unstable in all his ways. He says, let not that man think he can ask anything from God and believe it and, and get and receive it. Talking about humans. So today is the day that we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to hit the highways and the byways. We're going to compel them to come in. We're going to give them the truth whether they like it or not. And we're going to receive the repercussions of that situation by the grace of God and the mercy of God, he will take care of us. And if we die, we die doing what he said to do. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I believe it's time for us to love on each other and 